Welcome to EC Electronics. This is a video on IPPS IT Officer exam preparation. And we are going to see the subject knowledge uh, areas in the upcoming videos and also in this video. So today we are going to see the area of operating system. So this are, these videos are actually capsules which will be helpful for your exam preparation. Okay, so today we are going to see about operating system. What is actually an operating system? I know that most of you will be familiar with this word, but what is actually operating system? Operating system is actually acting as an interface between the user or the user applications and between the hardware which is used for running the applications. We know that the computer consists of hardware and also user or user applications. So the user is using these applications and how to allocate the resources or the hardwares of the computer to these user applications. We know that the user applications examples are paint, music player or any program which you install or run in the computer are examples of user application other than the system applications or the system programs. So these applications need to be serviced while they are running and also these applications need some resources from the hardware or the peripherals. All these things are required while running. For example, if you are playing a music file, you need to hear the sound. Okay, so the, the digital format file is to be converted to analog format. And we need to hear the sound through the speaker. So all these activities while this music player is running is being coordinated with the help of an operating system. So that is why I have said the operating system act as an interface between these two. So while I am saying hardware, you should think about the ports, the peripherals, the secondary devices. All these things come in the hardware. So this Operating system or OS act as an interface or an intermediate between these two. So that is a very basic thing you should know about operating system. Now what are the main services provided by the operating system? The operating system is the main control or the coordinator of all the processes running in the computer. So we know that when uh, we are writing a program and when we run this program it will be converted as a process that is it is in the active format whenever when we are writing a program this is a passive entity it is not running it is not giving you any output but when it is running or when it is executed it will become an active entity or a process so when a program is running it is converted as a process so whenever you are operating any of the application uh, programs word or anything it will be whenever it is running it is in a process state so it is a process so when i'm saying process you should think that all these application softwares or any your user written programs or anything whenever it is running it is converted as a process or it is said as a process so all these processes which is either printer servers or any other processes running in the computer are being coordinated there should be a coordination right so when the uh, when there were uh, when there is several number of processes uh, running there should be a coordination or a order of execution or a control to control all these processes to run in a good manner so the operating system control all these process execution so what are the main functions we are going to talk about the main functions uh, done or main functions of operating system. The first one is memory management. Memory management is a big thing. So we know that uh, we uh, in the computer there is a primary memory and also secondary memory. So this memory is being divided to all the processes as per the requirement. So this giving of memory and also uh, removing of data from a particular memory location is all done with the help of an operating system. So the first thing is memory management. Then second one is processor management, processor or CPU. So this entity or this unit is actually doing all the works. So this processor is controlled or coordinated 
so we uh, so there should be somebody to tell the processor that you have to process this program first then this program or this program or you have to do this task at this time so there should be somebody to tell the processor right so that job is done with the help of operating system that is operating system is actually controlling your processor okay so the second one is processor management third one is device management so the devices connected uh, or the devices in the computer are coordinated and managed without any error or without any lag with the help of a operating system then the fourth one is storage storage is actually memory it is uh, actually related to memory allocation or memory management uh, itself there is storage of some programs or a retrieving of some programs all these are coordinated with the help of a operating system then application interface which is one of the biggest task so we know that all the application softwares or programs need to be interfaced with the underlying hardware so that is done with the help of a operating system so these are the main functions done by the operating system it is actually acting as the heart or the core of a computer or a system okay so that is a basic introduction to operating systems now let us see what are processes what are the process states now also how these processes are being scheduled by the operating system next we are going to see the process state diagram that is what all states the process has to uh, pass through uh, while it is getting executed okay so let us see so when as i said earlier the program when it is being executed it is called as a process okay so when a process is created for the first time it is in the new state that is the program is now ready for execution so it is in a new state and before going to the running state here you can see there is a running state where the program is actually or the process is actually running but before going into the running state the, the operating system has to analyze the criteria and the constraints of the program right or the uh, process right so before going into the running state the process has to wait in the ready state okay so in the ready state if you see there is a ready queue in this queue there are all the processes which are waiting to get executed are being stored in the ready queue because if there is uh, there is request for running from various processes then the operating system has to schedule these processes okay so there will be various process which are ready for execution but all these processes cannot be executed at the same time the operating system schedules these processes based on certain criteria now the scheduling algorithms we will see nextly but before that you should know that in the ready state you can see a ready queue in which different processes are waiting to get executed okay so that is a ready state when the process is ready to get executed it is in the ready state now in the ready state now it is the process turn to get executed means it is scheduled by the scheduler to the running state okay and in this running state this process is actually being executed so from the new state it is coming to ready then it from ready state it is going to the running state where it is actually executed and in the running state two things can happen that is any interrupt is coming let us assume that any interrupt is coming which is having a higher priority means the current process has to wait that is the interrupt has to be serviced so when the running state is uh, execute uh, it is happening and an interrupt is coming means the current process will go to the ready state back and here again it has to be scheduled back by the scheduler so in the running state when an interrupt is happening it is going back to the ready state and also if the process is running and it is it requires some in, uh, input output devices to complete its execution but the input output device is not available or if the process is requiring some other process or some other event to complete 
to uh, complete its execution means it has to go to the waiting state. For example, if uh, some process needs a I.O. device, say a speaker or a, uh, any other I.O. device it needs, but it is not available currently. So, the device cannot, com the, the process cannot complete its execution, right? So, it has to go to the waiting state till the I.O. device or input output device is available. So, from the running state, it is going to the waiting state and when the I.O. device is available, it is not going back to the running state. Here again, it is going to the ready state, then scheduled by the scheduler and then coming to the running state. So, that is the waiting state. And when the running state is complete or think that the process has finished its execution means it is going to the terminated state or it has been exited. So this is happening when we actually close a, close a program. When we click on the close sign, this is happening. That is the program or the process is being terminated. Okay, so these are the various states in the process state diagram. So, when we are actually clicking on the icon to run a program and when we are closing the program, all these steps are happening in those moments. Okay, so we are not, uh, we are not aware of these steps, but all these things are happening in the background. The scheduler is being scheduling various processes and the process is waiting and the process is then get executed, then it is being terminated, all these things are happening. Okay. So, if you see the process state diagram, it will be like this. Now, I have told that there is a scheduler and this scheduler is actually scheduling the processes waiting in the ready queue. So, there is a ready queue in the ready state. There are various processes waiting to get scheduled and the operating system is having a scheduler which will schedule the processes from the ready to the running state. Now, what are the various scheduling algorithms? Let us see nextly. The first one is the FCFS algorithm. That is the first come, first serve. FCFS is first come, first serve. So, that means whichever process is first in the ready queue, it is executed. That is a first come, first serve algorithm. So, if the scheduler is following an FCFS algorithm, it will take the all the, uh, the processes at the top of the queue. So, that is a first come first serve algorithm. Next one is SJF algorithm means shortest job first algorithm. So, these are the some algorithms which will be useful for your exam. Shortest job first. Now, in the shortest job first, the scheduler or the uh, operating system will analyze the the CPU execution time of each process. That is, each process will consume the CPU's time to get executed. And the STF will select the process which is having the shortest CPU execution time. That is, we know that when a process is running, it will consume some of the time from the CPU. The CPU has to execute, right? So, Whichever process is having the shortest consumption time of CPU, it is executed in the shortest job first algorithm. That is SJF. Next is priority based algorithm. So, we know that all processes are having priorities. They are highest priority processes and lowest priority processes. So, in the priority based algorithm, the process with highest priority is chosen. Okay, that, that is a process, uh, sorry, priority based algorithm. Next one is round robin algorithm. So, in this round robin algorithm, there are certain time slots and uh, without any consideration, all the processes are being executed to that time slot. I will demonstrate it. That is, let, the, let there are uh, two processes in the ready queue. P1 with uh, 2 seconds of execution and P2 with 3 seconds of execution, okay. And the time slot choosed by this round robin algorithm is 1 second. So, this is, I am going to schedule the P1 and P2 based on the round robin because it is easy if you, uh, if I draw the figure. So, I am going to schedule this now. So, P1 is having 2 seconds, P2 is execution time is 3 seconds. Okay, so, here the time slot is 
one second. So I'm going to divide this total execution time as slots of one 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 seconds. So this is one second, this is one second, this is one second, this is one second. Again, this is one second. Likewise. Now, first I'm going to take P1. It will execute for one second. Then P2 will execute for one second. Again, P1 will come again and execute for one second. Then P2 will execute for one second. Now the execution of P1 is complete. Here, see, one plus one is two. So P1's execution is complete. P2's execution is one two seconds complete and one more second is left. So after P2, again P2 will come. Okay. So this is the demonstration of round robin algorithm. So here what is happening? The execution slot is divided into various time slots. So here it is. I have chosen as one second. It can be two seconds likewise. So each process will be executed in a in a sequential format with the time slot. That is first P1 will come, then P2 will execute for one second. Then again one 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 second. Each process is being executed. Likewise, the execution is happening in a round robin algorithm. Okay, so these are the some of the important algorithms which are used for uh, scheduling the processes by the operating system. I hope this will be useful for your IDPS, IG of future exam and also any other competitive exams related to electronics. Okay, so uh, if you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up and also share this video with your friends. And if you want to see more videos, please do subscribe to the channel. Thank you.